just thank them for being open to sharing. Um, we only heard half of that testimony, so one day Nikki's going to get up here and, and she's going to share the other half with us so we can see the full thing together. Um, but that was, I am, I'm on. Um, but that is, that is just a blessing and, and just something that we're just so proud of. Our uh, announcements for this week, uh, just want to say uh, happy birthday to Sister Tanya. She celebrated her birthday this week. If you, She's still recovering from her knee surgery. She's started therapy, so we're just going to pray her on back into the service. I um, also want to thank you for the prayer. Oh, amen. Amen. Happy birthday to Sister Sherry. It's good to see her up there this morning. Um, we just want to just say thank you to everybody that's here. Um, so for the month of December... Then we will... Last Sunday, allowing us... Allowing us to, I want to thank you for your flexibility. Last Sunday was a different service. Um, and and we, I allowed uh, Living Word to, to have their service during our time. And so the service was different. It was to honor their pastor. But I appreciate it and I thank you for your flexibility and not being upset with me. <laughs> and with us for, for doing that. But we were able to honor that church and that small church and their pastor and their church family. So thank you for that. Uh, that is all the announcements I have. It is now time for our offering. Um, as we often say, there is four ways to give. There's You can give via Cash App. You can give via the website. You can give via text. And you also give via the plate. Um, our ushers are preparing and our and they will lead us in our time of giving.
New Creation, we're going to pick back up our series in the book of James. Um, in during World War II, the United States government launched a media campaign. And one of the things, one of the sayings, and we probably all have heard this saying, was loose lips, what, sink ships. Y'all heard that, huh? Y'all heard that before, right? But you know what's interesting, Pastor Miles, it was, it was loose lips might sink ships. Uh, uh, um, they, were, they, were, they were concerned about people sharing too much with people around them that they could be potentially spies. And so they didn't want their, their, their uh, navy or their fleet to be in danger, so they... They came up with this, this saying, loose lips, and we shorten it today, loose lips sink ships. Um, we have that same thing today. You, you've heard it, stop what? Snitching. Or, or what, how's the saying go? Idiom go? Snitches get what? Stitches. There we go. I know y'all have heard this. Snitches get stitches. We, we have this. And, and, and it's it, to illustrate that what you say matters. Last time we had a message on this, we, we talked about not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word. So, so I want to pick up, back up, and I want to read for our hearing. I want to go back to verse 19. Um, but our text for this morning will be verses 26 and 27. James chapter 1. Starting with verse 19 through verse 27. Before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, have your way. Lord, help us to understand your word. Help us to receive your word and see it with fresh eyes. And although we may hurt this, Lord, help it to penetrate our hearts that it will cause us to be not just hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Lord, we pray that you just have your way with this time. Use me. Let the Holy Spirit speak through me. That the word of God will be magnified. The word of God will be understood. And that you will be given all the glory, honor, and praise. Oh, Lord, let the words of my mouth. The meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable unto you, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I've entitled this message, True Religion. True Religion. Verse 19, it reads, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be what? Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. In our text for this morning, those who consider themselves religious... And yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. True religion. Verse 26 says, those who consider themselves religious. This term religious was a, was a word I used much in the New Testament. This word religious was literally talking. It's not how we think of religion or religious. 
but it was outward um, activity, outward things that you did in your body, outward displays of activities and ceremonies. It was, it was the outward display of what was true in your heart. So, so, so the, the writer here is not singling out any religion. But he, what he's saying here, it says that those who consider themselves religious and yet does not control the way they speak, that religion is worthless. New creation, I, I think this morning, James is trying to tell us something. If we don't control how we talk and how we talk to each other and how we talk to the world outside of the church, people are going to look at our religion and say that's worthless. And God is going to look at us and say that's not the Christianity that I gave you. How we speak is important. We see it in the world. Loose lips sink ships. Stop snitching. Snitches get stitches. We, we, we understand the value of what we say everywhere else but in the church. We, we talk about each other. We gossip. We, we do all of the things that the world does. And we, we, we come back to, to the church and we try to figure out why nobody wants to come to church with us. Nobody wants to be like we are. Nobody wants to sign up for that. We, we see it in, even in politics. People who are professing to be Christians but doing unchristian-like things. And saying unchristian-like things. And, and then we're looking and, and the world is saying, but that's supposed to be Christianity. Whatever label you put on it, conservative, evangelical, whatever label you want to use, it doesn't matter. If, you, if we can't control the way we talk, if we can't control our tongues, our religion is worthless. See, see in, in verse 26, religion is used in a negative connotation. It has a negative aspect to it. But it also, the, the, the writer is saying, don't deceive yourselves. See, he's been work, working on this idea of being deceived all throughout this chapter. In, chap, in verse 16, it says, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light who does not change like shifting shadow, um, shadows. Verse 16, that's verse um, 22 says, do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. We have a lot of Christians walking around deceived. Not because of what the world thinks about um, us. It's what we think about ourselves. We think that we're not as bad as everybody else. We have this comparative religion where we compare ourselves with everybody else. Well, you know, I'm not as bad as such and such. You know, they cuss all, they cuss all the time, Pastor Mac. They, you know, you know how bad they talk, but I don't do that kind of stuff. But, 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 but we, we talk about each other and, 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 and the Bible is clear. It, Jesus took it a step further. He says, if you, if you regard it, if you look at somebody, if you talk about somebody bad, you, you've committed murder. Go back and look at the Sermon on the Mount. Go, go back to, to, to Matthew four, five, and six. Go look at it. He, he takes it a step further. He says, it's not just the action, but it's the heart. And, 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 and the Bible also says, out of the heart flows wickedness. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, so if, if, if uh, we can't get our talk or our speech under control, it's a reflection on nothing else but our heart. Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. How many times have we thought about what we're talking about? Or, or you know, when, when your, your friend call you and say, you know what, guess what I heard? 
And, and, and you got, you get this conversation going back and forth about what you heard and what you saw and what you, what you witnessed and all these things. And, 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 and it's usually a person that's being degraded in all of that. And, 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 and then we go back to Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let un, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. That's a pretty broad category. It can be anything from gossip to slander. It can be anything from not lifting people up and encouraging them. It says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful to building others up according to their needs. We saw earlier in where it talked about anger does not produce the righteousness of God. We need to be slow to speak. Maybe we need to keep applying that when we get to here. Before we speak, is, is what I'm going to say benefiting the person that's here? That's, re that's, that's religion that, that is not worthless. That's religion that's, that, that God has, has established for us. Look in Matthew chapter 12. They're going to put it on the screen. Matthew chapter 12. Look, look what Jesus says. It says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by what? Its fruit. You can't get pears from an apple tree. So, so you can't get oranges from a pear tree. It, it, you know the tree by the fruit it bears. Verse 34 says, you brought a vipers. How can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on that day of the judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Let that sink in for a second. He didn't say by your actions, but by your words. By what we say to each other. I know I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the conviction right now because there's some times, there's some things that I've said that, that, that was not pleasing to God. And I'm not, I know I'm not on the only one in this boat because I've heard things said <laughs> that, that wasn't pleasing to God. So, so I know we're all in this boat together. It says, by our words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Our words matter. Our words matter. What we say matters. We cannot compartmentalize Christianity to a Sunday only thing. We can't just get up in here and be like, praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? And, and, and we can't get up here and say, oh, I love you, sister. Thank you for coming this morning. We can't do that. And then on Monday say, I can't stand that SOB. I, I can't. They, they get on my nerves. I wish they would just go away. You, we can't compartmentalize Christianity is meant to be lived out every day and and, and what what we see here Jesus is saying our words because what our words reflect will, will, will come out of our heart and our heart will dictate our actions and so our, if our words are bad I guarantee you there's some bad actions with it too see we can we can profess and we can be acquitted with our words by by confessing our sins to Jesus I heard it was said in this morning in Sunday school first John 1 and 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so all we have to do is with our words confess uh, um, Romans 10 9 tells us to confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that Christ raised him from the dead and we will be saved. Confess means that we have to say that Jesus is God and he is the son of God. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. We have to confess it, meaning to speak it out. That's what will acquit us. 
But our words can also condemn us. So we need to pay more attention to our words. James, later on in his book, in chapter 3, we're going to get to that when we get to chapter 3. Oh, we're going to get deeper into this new creation. This is just a touch point because we James digs deeper. But he, I got I to gotta give you a preview of that message because it says in verse 9, with the tongue, we praise the Lord and Father, and with, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Think about that for a second. These are not just anybody. Everybody, every human being has been made in God's likeness. No matter what religion they believe, we all have been given the Imago Dei. That means the image of God. We are made in his likeness. We are image bearers. Everybody in this world is an image bearer. But So when we hate other people that don't look like us, we're hating image bearers. When we hate people that we don't like, we're hating image image bearer think about that for a second not just anybody it's not like kicking a dog you know you're you're hating an image bearer of god somebody that god took the time out to create somebody that god in the womb took his precious time and knitted that baby in the womb that became a human being that's an image bearer of god right now jasmine has an image bearer of god in her stomach and, and, and if we hate people that are image bearers, that's what Jesus Christ, that's what James is saying. It says we can, we can praise God with our tongue, but then we can also curse image bearers. Verse 10 says, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. James, I told you James is very straightforward. This, this, we, we cannot continue to live like this. We cannot continue to separate our speech from out there from in here. Our speech needs to be consistent in here and out there. Uh, uh, but, but James goes on in verse 27. And it says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. He said, let me give you what true religion looks like. And he sums it up. This isn't the full definition, but he says, he says as, as a matter of contrast, he wasn't trying to give a full definition. He was saying bad religion is this when we don't control our tongue and we don't control how we speak. But here's what real, real true religion looks like. It says... Religion that the God, the Father, accepts is pure and faultless. He, he takes a, you know, James is writing to Jews, Jewish believers, and so he takes a page out of the sacrifice book, and he uses terms related to sacrifices. He says, what God the Father accepts is pure and faultless. You remember in the Old Testament when you had to give a sacrifice, it had to be pure and faultless or undefiled. It had to be a perfect sacrifice, as perfect as you could find. The best of the best is what God would accept. And, 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 and so he says here, religion that God accepts as pure and flawless is this, to look at the orphans and the widows. What does that mean, Pastor? It, it, it means this. See, back in the day, they were a patriarchal society. What does that mean? That means the men were the one, only ones that worked. Very seldom did you find women that worked in that day. So if, if the man was the only one that worked, when a, the husband died and left a widow, she usually was in need because she just lost her breadwinner, the one who took care of her. And so when we see widows, it's talking about women who aren't able to work and are in need. And when we see orphans, it's the same thing. If the husband's gone, if the parents are gone, then there's nobody to take care of the child. And there's, so there's orphans out there that are unable to take care of themselves. What it's talking about is those who are simply in need. It, it, it's those who need or outcast, those who don't have what we have. It, those who, if we help, can't do nothing for us in return. 
See, God wants us to take care of those. Our, our religion is pure and it's undefiled when we take care or we look after or we do things for those who cannot do anything back in return. When we care for those who have been socially outcast, we care for those who have been put on the back burner of life. Now, we can, we can broaden that perspective. It's not, not just widows and orphans, but it was a good example. But the bigger point is that our religion has to have feet. Our religion has to be doing something. We can't just hear the word. We have to be doers of the word. And to do the word, he gives us a great way to do it. Take care of those who can't help themselves. That's why I'm so excited about the clothes closet and the food pantry because that's our way of helping those who can't help themselves. It, it, it's, it's all about who God and the Holy Spirit leads you to help. Those who can't help themselves. It's, it's not limited to that, but that's a great place to start. If you want to focus on something, focus on those people who don't have. Focus on those people that can't help you in return. That's going to be more reflective of true religion that God accepts. But he also goes forward and says another thing. He says, and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This, this, this word polluted, some of your versions might have spotless. He wants us to stay spotless. This is more referring to as orphans and taking care of the orphans and widows refer to our conduct. This is referring to our character. This is, our character has to be spotless or not polluted by the world around us. What does that mean? It simply means this. That we can't allow, we have to be in the world, but not of the world. We, 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 we're called to go out into the world to make disciples. But when we out there making disciples, make sure that we don't get polluted by the world and the thinking of the world. See, see, the world's going to tell us a whole lot of things contrary to Christianity, and we can bring that stuff back to Christianity thinking, I don't have to come to church on Sundays. I can just watch it on video. And that's great, but that's the, the, the Bible says, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. There, there's something about when we get together as a church family. There, there's something about when we are able to talk and interact with each other and share and, and, and give testimonies. How we, we witnessed it a couple of weeks ago when Tammy gave her testimony how powerful it was. It wasn't a dry eye in this place. People were watching the video like, why were you wiping your eyes? I, I couldn't help it. I, because we, we only went live after the testimony. So they didn't get a chance to hear how powerful the testimony was. And, and, and there's something about the assembly. But not just that. The world can tell us all kind of things. If, if you get too deep into politics, you go, you're going to get frustrated. Because, can I just say this? There, God is not Republican or Democrat. However you feel you vote. Because if you don't and you violate your own conscience, you're sinning against yourself. Don't let anybody say, oh, you got to vote this way because you're a Christian. Each one of us, if we're Christians, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. So, so we, can't, we can't use that. So, God, so, but but we, we'll have people that want to make us afraid that if this party takes over, and we're going to go back 50 years. If this party takes over, then, then it's all just... Uh, immorality and, and everything is going to be at play. And, and, and we see all of this and then I'm still thinking I, I fail to realize why this is so scary because at the end of the day God is still on the throne. I don't care who gets elected. I, I mean I, I, I don't like sometimes who's elected. <laughs> I, if I'm truthful about it I, I, I can't stand with, with certain people who are have certain views get elected.
But at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me one bit. Because at the end of the day, God is still on the throne. And God's promises are still true. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. And so no matter what happens in, in this world, our religion is, is to be focused on those who are in need. Our religion needs to be focused on those who can't help themselves. Our religion needs to be keeping ourselves spotless from the influence of the world. That's what he's calling us to. So let me ask a couple of questions. Let's just do a little pop quiz. You don't have to answer. You just think to yourself. These are, these are internal questions. How are we at being doers of the word? Are, are, we, are we taking what we're hearing and learning and are we applying it to our lives? Are we, how are we about doing being doers of the word? And how is our relationship with God? reflected through our actions through how we live are we are we taking the opportunity to take care of those who can't help themselves those who are socially outcast those who are in need but not just through our actions how are we doing it through our speech through our tongue see that's we we, we talked about it last last time it says they will be blessed in what they do. That's how you be blessed. Not, not this naming and claiming. Not this you give to the church and God's going to give to you. Not that. If you do what God has called us to do, that's how you're blessed. We're searching for blessings. And he's made it clear how to be blessed. But, but see, the difference is this is hard. This ain't easy. And I'm not, I'll be, I'll, I wouldn't be passive if I could tell you that this would be easy. This is not going to be easy. But see, here's the thing about being easy. See, God has called us to more than just easy. He called us to be more than just being successful. We saw it at the beginning of this book. It says, count it all joy when we face what? Trials of many kinds, knowing that the testing of our faith will develop perseverance. And per perseverance has to have its perfect work so we can be complete. Lacking nothing. That means we got to go through some hard times to develop some perseverance to be able to get through some more hard times. Because God wants to make us complete. But it doesn't come without a promise. It says uh, um, in the other parts of the Bible that he wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. The problem is we don't submit to what his plan is for our lives. We think we know what's best for us. We think we can pop off and say whatever we want and there's no consequences. We think we can say or curse people and, and do all of these things and, and, and there's no repercussions. You know, I always wondered what would happen or how life would look different, Pastor Mac, if, if God punished us immediately. I, I, I always, you, you know, like when we raise kids, I'm, I'm in the process of raising my kids right now, and, and they do something wrong, and, and, and discipline usually is immediate. And I always wonder, what would, how would things look different if God treated us like we treat our kids or we treated other people? How, how much different would our actions be? How much different would our speech be if if God, as soon as we said it, he did something to us to make us know, oh, I shouldn't have said that. It, it, things would be a lot different, but aren't you glad? See, if I put it like that now, aren't you glad for grace and mercy? Uh, aren't you glad that God has allowed us some mercy and some grace to get it right while we have time? So let this be our warning. Let this be our, 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 our first warning. Like, te like teachers say, this is warning number one. Let this be the warning number one. And hopefully we don't ever have to get to warning number two. Because of grace and mercy, God has dealt with us. Not how we, he could deal with us. But he deals with us in loving kindness and tender mercy. Aren't you glad? If you're glad, just say amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. I thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for not dealing with us, 
the way you could deal with us, but giving us grace and mercy. Lord, help us not to waste that grace and mercy, but be doers of your word, not just mere hearers of your word. Help us to guard and bridle our tongue. Put it under watch. Put it under supervision that we don't say things that are not reflective of you. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us, to us, and through us. But now, Lord, we ask that you just remove us out the way and allow your Holy Spirit to work through us to be a blessing to those who are in need, blessing to those who are around us. Give us insight. Give us understanding. Help us to see where you want us to work. And we'll get, be sure to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Now, God, there may be somebody under the sound of my voice who doesn't believe in you yet, who is looking for a church home. Whatever it is, Lord, we ask that you just move now. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You might be here and you are looking for a church home. Or you might be here because you felt led to come here. The, the great thing about God, God makes no mistakes. And here at New Creation, we teach that in order to be saved, you have to believe five things. Like I said earlier,